Hey, you want to learn about the nuts and bolts of the Sony ZV-E10 in less than 10 minutes? I've got you covered. Before we jump into this video, don't hesitate to like and subscribe. Let's keep it brief and see together the most important features of this camera. What I enjoyed with the ZV-E10 is the crisp quality capturing videos in 4K. While it can capture 4K video, there's a hefty crop at 30p, but not at 24p. Talking about crops, you will see a lot of cropping, depending on which options you will choose. For instance, when filming slow-mo footage at 1080, at 100p capture for slow-motion footage, there will be a crop. Yes, off-speed recording is available, but only at 1080p. It's available in the SNQ slow and quick shooting mode. You can record at 1, 4, 8, 15, 30, 60, 100 or 120 frame per second with 24, 30 or 60p playback options. You'll be able to use 60x speed fast motion and 5x slow motion. 120 frame per second is a great slow motion, don't get me wrong, but comparing with the competition, the Fujifilm X-S10 and X-T4 go further with slow-mo as far as 240 frame per second at 1080p and net clearer 120 fps footage. The ZV-E10 is powered by Sony's NPFW50 battery. It's definitely not a new and improved battery, in fact, it's old, very old, as my Sony NEX 5R, which I have bought in 2013, is using it. Don't get me wrong, it's a fine lithium battery, but with new cameras coming out and people complaining about the battery life, I thought there would have been somewhat of an improvement. It's rated for about 80 minutes of record time or 440 photos. But your mileage will vary based on how you use the camera, the outside temperature, etc. On-the-go charging is available, but it's pretty slow. It takes about 3 hours to recharge a nearly depleted battery with a charger. The in-camera microphone is a great one. The camera has a built-in directional 3-capsule microphone, which provides pretty decent quality audio when vlogging in selfie mode. So I'm testing out the microphone of the Sony ZV-E10 in a very crowded area, like here at the beach, surrounded by many people, surrounded by kids who are having fun, and of course listening to the relaxing sound of the waves. I know this camera is not waterproof. I am oof, being extra careful. So for those wishing to avoid the purchase of additional accessories, it's great news. And the ZV-E10 is sold with a hot shoe attachable windscreen, also known as a dead cat. Sony still didn't add the touch control to the LCD screen. It does limit your control over the camera when you're both cinematographer and on-screen talent. You can tap the screen to set a focus point, but unfortunately, that's it. If you are recording a selfie vlog and want to make some settings between clips, you will need to get behind the camera and work with the rear buttons. Or you will have to add some shortcuts. The display itself is excellent. The 3-inch 1.4 million dot LCD is sharp enough to be your only viewfinder and plenty bright, especially if you turn on the sunny weather display setting. It is very handy when working with the camera outdoors on a sunny day. But don't wear your sunglasses! Something else I've noticed and I've already noticed it on the ZV-1 is the fact that when you wear your sunglasses, you don't see anything on the LCD screen. Yeah, that's a bummer. 
Yeah, nothing. It's just plain dark. Even if you use the option bright sunshine or there's an option called bright sunshine. And uh, this option is for the LCD screen. It makes it brighter, but even if you make it brighter, like I did right now, you don't see anything on the LCD screen. That's a bummer. A red outline shows around the frame when recording, but that's not new, as some other cameras of the RX100 family also have that option. There's also a tally light on the front panel, an additional visual confirmation that you're rolling footage. The ZV-E10 uses the same autofocus system as other recent APS-C models from Sony, including the A6100 and the step-up model in the line, the A6400. It mixes phase and contrast detection, spreading coverage across the frame. The autofocus is able to track subjects once they've been acquired, and it supports faces and eye detection for people and pets. Another complaint to be made about the ZV-E10 as a handheld video camera. It's the stabilization. In-body system, IBIS, are more and more common. But Sony chose not to use IBIS, but to rely on a mix of lens-based stabilization and digital active shot to achieve handheld footage that's free of jumps and jitters. With the handheld grip, active shot is pretty impressive, but it comes at the cost of angle of view. It crops footage to get the job done. So, as you can see, is it the maximum wide? Oh yeah. So that's the maximum wide lens you can have with the steady shot on. So, about the stabilization of the ZV-E10. You have three types, three options of stabilization. You have the stabilization off, stabilization standard, standard stabilization, and you have active stabilization. But the active stabilization is cropping in the image. So, you know, I don't want that. So what I did was um, just using standard stabilization. I was telling myself, well, why not? Maybe it's not the best of the stabilization, but at least it's going to perform 50-50 well when I'm walking. But it didn't. And I was thinking, that's okay. Sony has got a great software called Catalyst Browse software, where I can put my footage and it's going to make them smooth. Well, that's what I thought. That's what I thought, and that's what I hoped, because I was, I was really afraid to do my statements again, which I won't do. So at least you will see what you get with the camera. So something you should really uh, keep in mind is that when you put the option standard stabilization, you don't have enough metadata for the Catalyst browser to perform a stabilization post-production. Let me explain. It means that you cannot stabilize your footage if you use standard stabilization, which is not the best uh, post-production. You cannot do anything. What you see is what you get, unfortunately. So now I'm talking to you and I'm using, and I'm not using any stabilization. <laughs> I'm not using any. So you will see the difference when I'm going to put the footage in the Catalyst Browse uh, software of Sony, so that at least you will see that the sta stabilization is better. But it's extra work post-production. Remember on the ZV-1, there was a soft skin effect. Well, you have it too on the ZV-E10. But you need to know that with some specific options, like when filming in 4K at 30 frames per second, you won't have the option. Is it blurry behind me, guys? Let me check. Ooh, quite nice. Now let's put it back to normal. Et voilà. Hey, you know what? I'm going to do one of my statements with the background blur. Voilà, background defocus. So, if you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. It 
is uh, almost 9 p.m. and I just wanted to test out the capacity of the ZV-E10 in low light. Well, as far as I'm concerned right now, I'm not checking the LCD screen too much because I want to talk to you. But I guess it's uh, handling pretty well the low light situation and all of the footage you're going to see or you've just seen it or about to see now are the footage I'm shooting right now. So in between 9 p.m. Uh, 8.45 and 9 p.m. We'll talk more about the how-tos in the next video. Like for instance, how to stabilize your footage easily post-production with Sony's Catalyst browser. All in all, the ZV-E10 is a good way to go as long as you're aware of its limitations. And don't forget to buy some extra batteries. You'll have some fun with it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit, no, smash the thumbs up and the subscribe button in order to see each other again soon. Take care les amis. Salut.